This is a program about low-level carbon monoxide protection with the Test Products International Model 780. Now it's a short program, but we're going to help you get it out of the box. We're going to help you get the batteries in, get it activated. We're going to go over the screen and the press pads. Um, we want to make sure that you get this uh, started so that you can begin low-level measurement. This is Bob Dwyer with the Carbon Monoxide Safety Association. Here's our contact information, our website. Here's a good email address for me. And uh, a reminder that every day is a Carbon Monoxide Safety Day. You can also check out the Carbon Monoxide News at cosafety.blogspot.com. And we'll talk more about that uh, later, and you'll see some entries from that site. And we'll start off with just a question. To everyone, who's responsible for the air you breathe? Well, you know, I said I'd talk about this later, uh, those news headlines and uh, the cosafety.blogspot.com location. Um, you know, every day um, there's news stories um, and headlines uh, pasted into that uh, site. Um, you know, carbon monoxide detection, you know, at each location, you know, there's a lot of carbon monoxide alarms out there. People may not be paying attention to them. You know, every home should have at least one low level. Every building should have at least one low level carbon monoxide uh, monitor. Uh, it gives an early warning for uh, the presence of carbon monoxide, maybe at the beginning stages of a more serious situation that wasn't there yesterday, wasn't there an hour ago. Um, so, you know, really, let's pay attention to carbon monoxide detection, and the earlier the better. So let's take a look at this low-level carbon monoxide monitor. Well, we're going to talk about uh, low-level carbon monoxide uh, detection with the TPI 780, uh, but we're also going to talk about um, other carbon monoxide alarms. You know, there's laws and codes. If we have to follow those and regulations concerning uh, smoke detectors and CO detectors in dwellings, um, landlords and responsible residents of any dwelling, you know, we got to know them and abide by them. Um, you know, some of these laws and rules specify you have to have a specific listing, a UL 2034 listing um, for the law of carbon monoxide alarm detection. Uh, but that's not to say you can't have one that goes off earlier that give, provides you with a safer, an earlier warning. Uh, you know, they say on smoke detection, the earlier the better. You know, duck on it. You know, the earlier the better with carbon monoxide is going to make a big difference. Well, you know, even if there's no law regarding CO alarms, come on. They provide protection. Uh, what are you thinking about if you don't have them? What about your family or friends that come visit? Um, maybe you're not thinking about carbon monoxide. You know, you can learn more about measuring and detecting CO using a low-level detector that your other ones may not have provided uh, that information for you. It's hard to be interested in something if you, if you don't know what you're looking for, if you don't know if they don't even give you a digital display. Uh, you know, there's a lot of trust. I understand that part. We have to have them. I have them. But, you know, let's talk about maintenance. We're told to keep CO detectors in good working order to test them monthly. What does that mean? You, you, does it, the batteries, you, you dust it off, you do the press test and the alarm sounds. Um, you know, I, I highly recommend every home should have at least one low-level CO detector because you can learn from carbon monoxide measurement at low levels. Um, you know, and actually with this Model 780, as we're going to see, um, when we get to the lab, and uh, we're going to put some gas on some uh, of these alarms, and uh, you're going to be able to see how you can use a little spray gas, just a little dash, and you can verify that your uh, low-level monitor is responding to actual carbon monoxide. You can push that button, too, and it'll make that alarm sound, but with this, you can get an immediate, uh, less than a minute response that your unit is activating and alarming. Now, when we get to my lab, uh, it's going to uh, sound a little bit different. Might be using a different microphone there. It might be a little uh, noisier in the background. But uh, let's take a look at uh, testing of carbon monoxide detectors. 
So we're at 42 minutes, carbon oxide levels 56 on the TPI model 780, 67 on this digital, um, this one 66, 55, the model 780 keeps alerting us to levels, again these are not alerting us. If this were to increase, again, uh, over 70 parts per million, um, again, the restrictions on the UL2034 models are they have to wait an hour uh, when they get over 70. They've now dropped below 70. Uh, this unit, however, <clears throat> the TPI model 780 continues to alert us while these non-digital alarms sit here. And if we think we're safe from carbon monoxide with these devices, we may not be. I'd highly recommend you get a low-level monitor and one that you can actually test with gas with the calibration cap and the little bottle of test gas. Well, I've got a Model 780 in my lab. Let's go take one out of a box, uh, pull the instruction book out. Let's take a look at the facing. We'll get some batteries. Uh, in the unit and we'll get it activated and then we'll run some tests through it. Test Products International did a very good job in packaging the low-level CO monitor. There's instructional information on the outside. On the back side there's a QR code. Uh, we're going to see all that. Let's get the box open. Well, I highly recommend that every home have at least one low-level carbon monoxide detector. Why? Well, gosh, if you have all the others, uh, they're high-level detectors. A low-level detector like this model um, 780 by TPI, it's pretty easy to use. Um, we'll just take it out of the box. We've got some wall mounts and some Velcro. We'll put those aside. There's our AAA batteries. Take it out of the box. Here's an instruction manual. We'll make sure we take a look at that. And here's a um, mail-in warranty card, registration card. Uh, there's a QR code on the back. Uh, so we can use that to get the full manual. Um, it's pretty simple um, setup here. There's a large screen. There's uh, off the corners of the uh, bottom of the screen on each side, there's a silence and test button. There's a display. We'll talk about those. It looks like there's three LED lights, and it looks like uh, this is where the sensor is, and this is where the sound comes from. Well, we'll take off the back cover, and then we'll um, insert the batteries, and we'll get going with this Model 780. Okay, this unit runs on AAA batteries, just two of them. They'll last about six months. The thing that makes the uh, batteries wear down is the alarm sound. So pay attention to the alarm and pay attention if you have carbon monoxide in your home. There will be, an, uh, on the screen, there will be a, a low battery indicator and the yellow uh, LED will be flashing. So you have some help there, but it's important. You need to know you have control over the safety in your house with this low-level carbon monoxide monitor. Well, low-level CO monitors are, um, are not only an early announcer of the presence of carbon monoxide, perhaps the onset of a more serious condition. They can provide early detection of hidden, slow-moving, slow-smoldering electrical fires, as an example. Well, we'll just go ahead and we'll put in our triple A batteries, our two triple A batteries. Now we're going to go ahead and slide on this back cover. Now this is the switch. Now once we do this, this is what activates our alarm. So I'm going to go ahead and activate it. And as you can see, there's a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. 
it gave us our three beeps. The power button flashed green, letting us know that it's operational. We checked the alarm LED, uh, the red one, and then the yellow fault. Okay, so there's no carbon monoxide in the space that we're on. Um, so the battery act, uh, cover activated once the batteries were in, and now we're measuring carbon monoxide in real time. Some of you may be surprised to see numbers appearing on the screen, um, or it may alarm in less than 30 seconds or so after you've um, activated this detector. Um, you have to take a look around where you are. You may be in a place where carbon monoxide is present. It may be your own home, uh, and you may not have been aware of that. Well, now you have the ability to know more about your home and if you have carbon monoxide in it. Looking at the front of this unit, you'll see the large display, the press pads on either side, one for the uh, testing. Okay, that certainly works and lets us know that the lights are flashing and all the electronics are engaged. Uh, the display on the right, right now it's showing real-time measurement of parts per million of carbon monoxide. One press of the display, it goes to peak and we've just opened up this detector out of the box. It hasn't detected any carbon monoxide. Um, if there was, when the last, this would show us the highest reading in the last 24 hours, and that's a continuously updating 24 hours. The next press of the display, it goes to COHB percent, or carboxyhemoglobin level. This would be an approximation of how much carbon monoxide saturation there would be in the hemoglobin in your blood. Uh, in the, based upon that peak measurement, of 24 hours. So if you were in a, that peak that you may happen to press um, and you see that next number, COHB, that tells you what the approximate carbon uh, or carboxyhemoglobin level is in your blood. The alarm light flashes when it's over 10 parts per million. If you see that alarming and it's not making a sound, it's in alarm mode, it may be on silence. The left will flash green once a minute, lets you know that there's power engaged. And the fault, the yellow flashing light, will tell us when we have a low battery. And there also will be a little symbol up on the screen. Okay, um, and if we have a sensor error, it will also flash yellow. One more press of the display, and we're back to real-time measurement of carbon monoxide. This is the TPI Model 780 low-level CO monitor. It responds to carbon monoxide as it passes across the sensor. The verification test for this is easily done with this accessory a check gas cap, the can of test gas, a dash of spray, and as we can see demonstrated here, the level of carbon monoxide that is passing across that sensor uh, is now displayed. Um, this gas is slowly venting out, but you can see within a matter of seconds, we are alerted that there's a level of carbon monoxide um, in our building and it's uh, perhaps increasing so we should definitely check out to see what the cause is. Well we saw how quickly that Model 780 low-level detector responded to a known quantity, a certified quantity of carbon monoxide gas but let's just, just visualize here that this was in our home and not a not with an encapsulated test, verification test. It actually is coming from inside our home. So wherever we live, whether it be in a single story, three story, basement, no basement, um, an apartment complex, uh, a modular home, a mobile home, you know, above a store, you know, a high rise. Well, how many potential sources of CO are there in our building? In our homes, have we over tightened them to save energy? Do we have enough combustion and make up air for our appliances, for ourselves? 
What can produce CO in your house? You know, you may be in a location that has low level CO and you've been unaware of it, even though you're familiar with it and where you are. The alarm may startle you if it goes off. Remember, it goes off above 10 parts per million. You saw how quickly. If there's any CO where you are, the digital display will inform you. It's one thing if it's your own house or building, you have a pretty good idea of what the combustion sources may be. But if you're in a motel or a vacation rental or recreational vehicle, caravan, or any other location unknown to you, or even if you've been there before, if you've sleep there, it's recommended you take a low-level CO detector with you. You know, some people would think this may be an unusual situation, but it's not an unusual situation. There are thousands of people that utilize this type of a, of a camper associated with their horsemanship. You know, low-level detection in all kinds of vehicles that you sleep in, it's a good idea. You know, I don't believe I can say this too much. You know, we live in a combustion culture. Uh, the news stories verify the situations. Unfortunately, everything you see up here represents death or injury from carbon monoxide. At home, is there a gas furnace, water heater, boiler, fireplace, or cooking system? Is there an attached garage or underbuilding parking? Are there unvented gas appliances being used or a wood heater of some design? Do people smoke cigarettes? How close are you living to major highways or roadways? Carbon monoxide measured inside with your 780 could be coming from outside. Take your detector outside if it's not freezing temperatures or over 104 degrees Fahrenheit and see what you have around you. It may be zero, it may be not. And keep it out of the rain or away from moisture. You know, maybe a car is warming up alongside a house and the exhaust is blowing up against the siding or near a door or window. If you don't believe it, you can test the situation for yourself with a 780 low-level CO detector. If you ever feel necessary to call a fire department when your 780 is beeping, Please note the levels on the digital display and inform them when you call that you have a low-level CO detector. If you have additional CO detectors in your home, and I highly recommend that you do, and they have not made a sound when your 780 low-level monitor has, remember, they most likely are high-level detectors. Their lowest alarm set point. And look at their packaging. Some of them have them on the outside, and some of them you have to look, you have to read the instructions to find the set points. They're at 70 parts per million. Now they must resist alarming for one hour. And then they can take up to four hours to sound off, and that's what the listing requires. Now with a low-level detector, you don't have to wait for that. You can find out early, find out what the problem is, and get, out, get it fixed or get out. You know, we're all susceptible to carbon monoxide poisoning, every one of us. If you start experiencing symptoms like headache, nausea, dizziness, weakness, or other poor health symptoms, and your low-level detector has been alerting you, and you've been waiting for the high-level detector to go off, Get out of the building. Call 911 or whatever emergency code number you call in the country you're in. It's called low-level protection for good reason. Well, when does this low-level detector sound off? And what is the silence feature? Just like it says, it's a visual and digital display begins at zero and goes up to 200 parts per million on that display. Above 200 parts per million of CO measured, the display reads high. 0 to 9 ppm, there's a visual display, but there's no alarm. The green LED will flash once per minute, always when there's power. At 10 parts per million and above, it's alarm ready. There'll be an audible alert in less than one minute. Often it beeps around 30 seconds. At 10 parts per million and above, a red LED flashes once per minute. The 780 is in alarm condition. Audible warnings begin. 
At 10 to 24 parts per million, there'll be one series of four beeps every minute for four minutes, and then followed by an auto silence for 24 hours, if still in this range. If it's still in the 10 to 24 part per million after 24 hour range, uh, the silence is released or it's overridden to one series of four beeps every minute for four minutes and then it goes back to the 24 hour silence. The red LED continues to flash once per minute even while it's in silence and this sequence will continue if CO levels remain in this 10 to 24 part per million range or until the batteries die. If the four beeps every minute is interrupted by depressing of the silence button, the 24-hour silence will begin immediately. Though silenced for 24 hours, the red LED continues to notify it is alarm ready. If this level of CO exceeds 24 parts per million, the silence will be released or overridden. This goes to the next alarm in silence range. This next alarm range is 25 to 34 parts per million of carbon monoxide and there's an 8 hour silence associated with this after the first 4 minutes. Again 25 to 34 parts per million there'll be one series of 4 beeps every minute for 4 minutes. And then there's an auto silence for 8 hours if it's still within this range. The red LED flashes once per minute even if it's silenced. If the 25 to 34 parts per million after 8 hours the silence is released to one series of 4 beeps every minute for 4 minutes and then to 8 hour silence again. It continues this sequence if the range remains. Pressing silence pad will interrupt beeps and auto silence begins immediately. The next alarm range is 35 to 50 parts per million associated with a 1 hour silence after the first 4 minutes. Now I had to use this in my little laboratory. Uh, I stuck a uh, container that I have uh, fashioned for taking high levels of carbon monoxide so I can contain the gas and still take a picture of the results. Uh, 35 to 50 parts per million there'll be one series of four beeps every 30 seconds for four minutes followed by an auto silence for only one hour if it's still within this range of 35 to 50 parts per million. The red LED flashes once per minute pressing the silence pad will interrupt the beeps and auto silence begins immediately but again it's for a one hour silence. You should be concentrating on getting people outside and calling 911. Do not go back inside without self-contained breathing apparatus. You know in my travels uh, fire departments are putting their breathing apparatus on anywhere from 10 to 35 parts per million for sure before 50 parts per million. Um, you know, so it's important when we get to this next level, we're at 51 to 70 parts per million. There's a, only a four minute silence. Now when your UL 2034 listed CO alarms hit 70 parts per million, they have to wait an hour and can take up to four hours to sound off. Well look, if the fire departments are putting their breathing apparatus on before this level, you should be notified. So that's why it's important you have this low level protection. Above 50 parts per million and under 70 parts per million, there's four beeps every 20 seconds. There's an auto silence for only four minutes. The red LED flashes twice per minute. The silence press and gives you four minutes. Please pay attention and get out. Don't worry about the annoying sound. You should be concentrating on getting people outside and calling 911. Do not go back inside without self-contained breathing apparatus. Well now we're in the 70 to 150 part per million range. We have a two minute silence. So above 70 um, and uh, under 150 parts per million uh, we've got a four beeps every 20 seconds. There's an auto silence for two minutes. The red LED flashes four times a minute. Again we press that silence pad. We only get two minutes. So get out. Call 911. The next range 150 to 200 parts per million there's only a one minute silence. Again 150 to 200 parts per million there's four beeps every 20 seconds. Auto silence for a minute. Red flashes five times a minute. You press that silence pad you only got a minute. Get out. Call 911.
Once that digital display gets above 200 parts per million, the screen just says high, and that's for high, like a high concentration. There's four beeps every 20 seconds. The red LED flashes six times a minute. There's only 16, excuse me, 15 seconds of auto silence. You know, you really got to get out. You got to pay attention to these things. Now, your high-level detectors, I've put plenty of them in plastic bags. Believe me, they're not responding and helping and supporting you with this information. You should have one of these. You should have one in every building. I'd consider taking one everywhere you go. You know, nothing like a gift of safety. You know, low-level carbon monoxide monitors given as gifts. You know, what a statement that makes. You may give it to someone, they may not really appreciate it. But if it lets them know that there's carbon monoxide present where they are, believe me, they will appreciate you. There's way too many stories about people perishing from carbon monoxide, being permanently injured because they didn't know it was there or their alarms didn't go off soon enough. You know, from infants to elderly, carbon monoxide safety, it's everybody's business. Well, that concludes the program on the TPI Model 780 low-level carbon monoxide monitor. Um, you can take a look at our website. Uh, there's some information there about carbon monoxide. Um, there's my contact information via email. If you have any interest in carbon monoxide safety or training programs, um, you can visit our carbon monoxide news at cosafety.blogspot.com. And we started with who's responsible for the air you breathe, and we'll leave you with that same question. Who's responsible for the air you breathe? Thank you.